Thank you for joining us to learn about changes coming to HCA's managed care enrollment policy. This change will become effective on April 1st. You may have heard this policy referred to as earlier enrollment. Today we'll cover the new policy changes and how this may affect you in April 2016. We'll review scenarios and provide examples of the letters that clients will receive regarding this enrollment change. This change begins effective April 2016 with the intent of enrolling clients into Apple Health Managed Care as soon as possible. Over the past few years, efforts to move Apple Health recipients into managed care have resulted in the enrollment of 1.4 of the 1.8 million eligible clients into managed care. This new enrollment policy change will move clients more quickly into Apple Health Managed Care. New or reconnecting enrollments are always prospective, sometimes requiring the client to wait up to two months to be enrolled, during which time they are on fee-for-service. Early enrollment will eliminate this fee-for-service time and get the client into a plan immediately. This policy has been known by several names as shared on the slide. You may have heard many of these name variations and perhaps others over the past several months. Today and going forward, we'll be referring to this policy as earlier enrollment. The most important distinction to make today is that earlier enrollment is not the same as early adopter, happening in Clark and Skamania counties, or what some may call fully integrated managed care. Earlier enrollment will be implemented statewide. Now that we know what to call it, Let's look at the two key principles of earlier enrollment. The first principle is that this new policy, beginning on April 1st, does not apply to everyone, including anyone already in managed care or in fee-for-service. It does apply to clients new to Apple Health Medicaid coverage and fee-for-service clients, or anyone who has had a break in service and is now coming back onto Apple Health. It also applies to a small group of individuals who have been on fee-for-service, are now renewing their eligibility, and have had their circumstances change, such that they are now appropriate to be enrolled in managed care. The second principle is that nothing about the current prospective assignment and enrollment process is changing. We can think of earlier enrollment as an add-on to our current process. We're going to revisit these two principles throughout our presentation today. Let's establish some common definitions for words that will be used during today's training. Eligibility. When a person is deemed eligible to receive Apple Health Medicaid coverage. Enrollment. When a person is enrolled in a managed care plan, including when a client selects their own plan. Enrollment usually occurs the same day that eligibility is established. Current month. When we use the term current month, we refer to the month the transaction occurred in Provider 1. Now that we've covered what to call the policy and when it's used, let's talk about why this is happening. We covered in a previous slide that the intent is to get clients enrolled into managed care more quickly. We can also think of it as means to fill the fee-for-service gap that new or renewing clients experience before they are enrolled or reconnected with a plan. With implementation of earlier enrollment, managed care eligible clients will no longer have a waiting period for initial enrollment or a gap in reconnected enrollment. The result will be that these clients will have quicker engagement with a plan with less interruption of existing care coordination. So what changes can we expect to see in April? Enrollments will be backdated to the first day of the current month for new Apple Health Medicaid clients enrolling into and those that have had a break in Medicaid coverage. Please keep in mind that although assignments for April began in February, there will be no backdating of enrollments until after the 1st of April. Now let's review the list of what's not changing. The processes you see on this slide will remain the same. For example, 
Assignments and changes in enrollment will continue to be prospective. PCCM enrollments will not change and the American Indian Alaska Native exemption process is not changing and no change for clients with other insurance or Medicare. Additional processes that will not be changing also include currently enrolled fee-for-service clients who are not eligible for managed care. There will still be voluntary counties as in the past. You will still need to refer to your county map for any updates to the counties that are voluntary. Clients will continue to not be assigned in voluntary counties. The assignment and enrollment cutoff dates as noted in the enrollment calendar are the same. For clients enrolling in a plan via the Health Plan Finder, you will continue to see that plan enrollment in Provider 1 the following day. It will look the same as it does today and there will be no changes to that screen. When it comes to earlier enrollment, the thing to keep in mind is that all processes are going to continue occurring. The difference is that a last step has been added to that process in order to fill the fee-for-service gap as we discussed on a previous slide. Earlier enrollment will affect external customers including managed care organizations or MCOs. Since the enrollment will be for the current month, the MCOs will be notified daily of new enrollments. Fee-for-service providers, hospitals, and other facilities. It will be important for providers to know whether the client is fee-for-service or on managed care, as this will affect billing and other payer requirements. Hospitals and facilities will need to assist patients who are not on Medicaid to enroll as soon as possible and check eligibility frequently in order to build the correct payer. The clients themselves will be affected as new clients will not have to wait on fee for service or enrollment to start in the future. Renewing clients should experience less of a wait between reapplication and reconnection to a plan. Now let's review how these new processes will work. As we've mentioned, the most important thing to keep in mind is that all processes are going to continue occurring as they do today. This means that assignments and reconnects will continue being prospective or in the next month. The difference is that a last step has been added to this process in order to fill the fee for service gap. What this means is that assigning and enrolling will be an automated two-step process. The prospective assignment or enrollment transaction is initiated either by the regular monthly assignment process or by a client enrolling in Health Plan Finder. Once this transaction is finalized in the system, usually overnight, then the current month transaction is initiated. It is important to remember that current month enrollment does not happen immediately after the prospective enrollment. The current month transaction cannot begin until the prospective transaction is finalized. Now I'd like to share a couple examples of the letters that clients have already begun receiving regarding their managed care enrollment changes that begin in April. A client will receive this letter in their welcome packet the day after enrollment is completed. This is a good resource for a provider to identify what plan they may need to contact. This example shows another type of letter that a client may receive when they have been assigned to a managed care plan with the enrollment being backdated to the first of the current month. In applying this example, the client could have become eligible on February 15th. Behind the scenes, the system assigned the client prospectively for March. After the prospective transaction was finalized, the enrollment was then backdated to February 1st, which would be the beginning of the client's enrollment with the plan and is shown on the letter. This is another good resource for a provider to identify what plan they may need to contact. 
This example shows what an Apple Health recipient would receive when they have selected a health plan via Health Plan Finder with the enrollment being backdated to the first of the current month. In applying this example, the client could have enrolled on February 15th via Health Plan Finder. Behind the scenes, the system enrolled the client prospectively for March. After the prospective transaction was finalized, the enrollment was then backdated to February 1st, which would be the beginning of the client's enrollment with the plan as shown on the letter. Again, this is a good resource for a provider to identify what plan they may need to contact. Now let's break this down day-to-day -day operation for providers by reviewing a few scenarios regarding managed care enrollment. The most common occurrence is scenario one. A new client or client with a break in eligibility is approved for coverage and selects a plan. Provider one applies the earlier enrollment criteria and the client is eligible for earlier enrollment. For example, a client applies on April 15, 2016 and selects a plan. Provider 1 enrolls the client in the plan overnight. The next day, the client is eligible for Medicaid and enrolled into a plan effective back to April 1, 2016. The plan will know the client is enrolled the next day and they are responsible for any health care costs back to April 1, 2016. Scenario 2. A new client or client with a break in eligibility is approved for coverage in Health Plan Finder after the assignment cutoff for the current month. Provider 1 applies the earlier enrollment criteria and the client is eligible for earlier enrollment. For example, the assignment cutoff is April 28, 2016. On April 29, 2016, Provider 1 assigns the client to a plan with a prospective enrollment date of June 1, 2016. The client qualifies for earlier enrollment and enrollment is backdated to the first of the current month, April 1, 2016, with continuous coverage through May. The plan selected is responsible for any health care costs incurred from April 1st 2016 forward. This is a scenario specific to a hospital admission that qualifies an individual to be eligible for Apple Health Medicaid. This helps recognize the importance of hospitals taking measures to ensure earlier enrollment. Scenario 3. A Washington citizen has a traumatic car accident on April 2, 2016. The person is hospitalized and on April 4th, hospital staff identify that applying for Apple Health is indicated. The application is submitted through the Health Plan Finder. The client or their family select or are assigned a plan for the prospective month and enrollment is updated in Provider 1. Now, Provider 1 can apply the earlier enrollment criteria and determine if the client is eligible for earlier enrollment. For example, the client's coverage with the plan starts April 1, 2016. The plan will be responsible for the entire admission and payment of claims. Scenario 4. A currently enrolled Managed care client contacts the agency and requests a transfer from their current MCO to another MCO. Since the client is already enrolled, requested plan changes will take effect prospectively. For example, on April 10th, a client requests to change from their current plan to a different plan. The client's enrollment with the new MCO will begin May 1st, 2016. Calendar cutoff dates still apply in this scenario. If the client requests an MCO change after April 28, 2016, the client would not be enrolled into the new plan until June 1, 
2016. What measures can a provider take to assure payment for services rendered before the managed care enrollment is completed? If the service required prior authorization, plans will have provider-friendly retrospective authorization policies and procedures in place. If you are not a plan enrolled provider, your options include plan enrollment, single case agreement, or non-participating provider designation. If you need assistance from HCA to resolve challenges with plans, please contact HCA MC Programs at hca.wa.gov. We offer the following suggestions to support the transition to this new enrollment policy. Ask the client to see their letter from HCA if they are newly enrolled and their card is not available. Check provider one often and always before you bill. If preparing for services to be rendered next month, call the HCA Medical Assistance Customer Service Center at 1-800-562-3022 for assistance with determining coverage plans that month. If a client is established with you and you are enrolled with the plan, call the plan and request to be recognized as the assigned primary care provider. If the client is established with you and you are not enrolled with the plan, call the plan and ask to enroll, have a single case agreement, be paid as a non-participating provider, or suggest the client find a plan enrolled provider. The agency has sent three provider notices to those who have signed up for the GUB Delivery HCA Provider Alerts listserv, which we'll share on the next slide. Here's a copy of the provider alert sent on February 10th. A second one was sent March 1st, and a third and final alert was sent March 15th. For more information about the topics covered in today's presentation, website and contact information is listed on this slide. For earlier enrollment questions, please email hca at hcamcprograms at hca.wa.gov. To sign up for the Apple Health Provider Alerts, you may register at the link shown on this slide. This video and presentation slides will be posted in 7 to 10 days to the HCA Training and Education website. Thank you for joining us today to learn about earlier enrollment.